Well, hey there, and welcome to my home office. Aside from my in-person meetings and recordings, this is where I do virtually all of my work, so let me show you around. So I've done my absolute best to compile an itemized list of everything in this room, all linked in the description below, but I didn't quite get everything. Uh, when we bought this home, we worked with a designer to furnish it, and while I do have uh, the original binder with a list of all the fixtures and furniture, some things are missing. Some things like my office chair that were back ordered when we went to make the purchase, and so we had to find substitutes, and so I don't have IDs on some of the items, but let's start with the desk itself. This is the Madeira Oak dining table for six, uh, which uh, I actually didn't even know until I started putting together this video that this table is made for your dining room, not your computer desk, uh, which I do find curious because it has this bar that runs underneath that I have found perfect for cable management. I did have to make one modification to the table though. I got a whole saw drill bit and put in a grommet so that I could run all of my cables neatly underneath. On the table itself, you'll find a number of items from the company Grove Made. Uh, that includes the desk shelf for the monitor. On the stand itself, uh, you'll find their headphone stand, MagSafe charging stand, and pen cup. Uh, there's also the keyboard tray and trackpad tray with accompanying wrist rests, and an extra large wool desk pad underneath it all. And for the longest time, I didn't have any of these accessories on the desk, and uh, it felt a bit soulless. You know, even just that felt pad, it serves the same purpose as an area rug does in a room, adds some warmth to the desk, some comfort, makes things a bit more cozy, Let's get to the tech now. I'm currently working off the 14-inch MacBook Pro. This one has the M1 Max chip, 10-core CPU, 32-core GPU, 16-core neural engine with the upgraded RAM to 64 gigs, one terabyte of SSD storage, and that is paired with the Apple Studio Display. Now, the Studio Display has gotten mixed reviews, to put it charitably, and I think the criticisms of this Apple product are pretty fair. I looked at a lot of different monitors and had a tough time making my decision. The reason I eventually chose the Studio Display was because for the longest time, my previous monitor had speakers and a webcam plugged into it because the internal webcam and speakers were so bad, and especially the webcam. You know, I have these beautiful doors and windows right next to my desk, which are great for general ambience in the room, but they do create challenging lighting conditions where, you know, only one side of my face is lit, and the contrast ratio can make me look a little bit like a low-budget movie villain on calls, so I need a quality webcam, and I want my music to sound good from the speakers, but because I was aspiring for a more minimal desk setup, I wanted those elements to be part of the monitor and not extra additions. So I made some concessions going with the studio display, most notably the price. I can only speak personally, but it has been a great fit for my needs thus far, and I am very glad I made the decision I did. Now, the other big departure for me is that I no longer have both a desktop computer and a laptop, and that is because I'm using the Thunderbolt 3 port on the studio display to connect directly to my MacBook Pro. And so even though I'm working off a 27-inch monitor, just like my old iMac, it's all coming from the MacBook. Even when the lid is closed, I can still use my Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad when I need to run to the office or use my laptop on the go. I just unplug it from that Thunderbolt cable. When I come back to my home office, I plug it back in. And this lets me get the best of both worlds, the mobility of a laptop, but the bigger monitor and peripherals of a desktop all running off the same machine. Uh, but there's more, because I actually have my external SSDs and my ethernet connected to the ports on the studio display, not the laptop. And while those connections are to the monitor, that single Thunderbolt connection to the MacBook relays those other ports to give the laptop ethernet and mount my external drives. Now you might be wondering, okay, what's the benefit of using the monitor's ports for that? Why not plug them directly into the laptop? And the simple answer there is cable management because I don't wanna have to unplug three, four, five different ports every time I take my laptop on the go and then plug them all back in when I get back to my office. The whole point of this setup is to make things easy and this configuration accomplishes that nicely. Let's now briefly go over the apps I'm using most on my computer. Uh, my email client is Airmail, Slack for internal company communication, Evernote for all of my notes and notebooks, Byword for writing, Notion for general life project management, and then my creative tools, DaVinci Resolve for video editing, Isotopes RX7 for audio editing, Photoshop and Lightroom for photography and image editing, Safari is my browser, 
And over here, we are Team Spotify. Finally, the rest of the room. The walls are painted with a chalkboard paint, so either myself or my daughters can draw on the walls and have them easily wiped down with a damp cloth. The paint brand is Benjamin Moore, and they can take any color of paint that you like and make a chalkboard version. This specific color is called Amherst Gray with the ID HC167, which, you know, come on, isn't that just special? Seizing the 167 online and on the walls. Let's do the rest of the furniture now in the room. If I don't mention something that you see by name, it means that I checked, but I couldn't find an ID for it. For the main light fixture, this is the MCL R3 three-arm ceiling lamp in black. The end table next to the chair is the Taj end table, also in black. The chair itself is the ace chair in colorway cobblestone jute. And the rug for the room is the Alicia hand-woven black area rug. On this other wall, we've got a couple of tote bags hanging on the wall, some minimal office art with a fake plant in the corner. And that brings us lastly to the shelves, which I don't have an ID for because they got swapped out last minute when our original shelving was backordered. Uh, but let's talk about what's on the shelves. There are a few practical things, printer, document storage, and then just general storage in those baskets on the bottom shelf. That's cords, mics, microphone, packing tape. Uh, there are several mementos from the Toronto Raptors run to the NBA championship in 2019, including the official championship hat and these Raptors championship Air Force Ones. And then there are tokens marking special professional and personal moments. I've got my photo books that are compiled when we travel for Nucleus Media Shoots. I've got my YouTube 100K subscriber plaque. Thank you for making that happen if you've made it this far in the video. Now would be a great time to hit the like button. And then I've also got these wooden tweets that memorialize some of my favorite professional and personal moments. I've got tweets from the launches of our company's products a baby moon remembrance for our first child, and one that marks when I completed one of my bucket list items of visiting every major league ballpark. And the service that made these tweets is called Laser Tweets, highly recommended. And that should be just about everything in the office. Again, it's all linked in the description below. If you've got follow-up questions, throw them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks as always for your time, attention, and trust. We'll talk soon.